Hi there, in this video I'm gonna show you how you can use a JavaScript to observe various modifications in your application. So as you can see on NDN we have a mutation event, but we shouldn't use it because it's deprecated. And because of that we can go with mutation observers instead. Actually I won't talk about this interface and I'm just gonna show you how to use it. As you can see we have a simple Tailwind UI component here and whenever I press this button the last entry is being duplicated. What's more we have a console log here which is an array with mutation record object. This object describes what actually was happened with our list. In this case we can see that type of this mutation was about child list. It means that in this case we have added a additional element which were listed right here. What's more we have another button. If I press it we have another mutation event. In this case a type of this event is also child list but instead of adding nodes we have removed one which is available right here. So I guess at this point you have grasped a main concept of mutation observer which is to observe various changes in your interface. Probably you have noticed already that mutation observer is in a way similar to event listeners. But instead of watching events, we are watching mutations and we get pretty accurate description of these mutations, which we can use in many different ways. So let's take a look at code. Using mutation observer requires us to use a mutation observer constructor which accepts a callback which is fired every time when mutation happens. When we have created this observer, the next step is to run observe method when we have to pass two arguments. The first one is a container which we are watching and the second one is a configuration object which allows us to specify which exact mutations should be observed. So for example we can observe changes in child list, attributes, characters and also we have filters and possibility to reach old values. And the last option is subtree which specifies if we are watching just this container and its direct children's or its nested elements as well. Basically as you can imagine it's a good idea to set those options in a way this function will be called only if it's necessary. Otherwise it may happen too frequently and make your application slow. This may happen especially if this function will contain some kind of heavy code. In the end besides of that it's also a good idea to use disconnect method whenever you don't need your observer anymore. So to sum this up whenever you need to keep track any changes in your DOM it may be a good idea to use mutation observers. The only thing you have to do is to make sure that both settings and logic in your callback are properly optimized. Before we end I'd like to show you some real example of using mutation observers. This is Ahoy which is our community built on top of Circle SO. In this case I was able to extend this platform by adding my custom JavaScript. As you can see there are some additional buttons which were added to this site dynamically. It means that I have mutation observer for my content column and whenever a new comment appears here it will add my additional UI as you can see right here. In the end that's a great example of using mutation observers because I was able to respond properly for changes in my interface and modify some of its elements and also add a logic to them because for example I can press this button and tip Kasia with Ahoy which were moved from my account to her. I hope that this real example was useful for you to imagine how you can use mutation observer in your projects. I believe that its main idea is simple but I think that the most important thing is to be aware of possibilities which mutation observer gives to us. I hope you will find this information useful and you will use this interface someday in the future. Meanwhile thanks you for your time and see you in the next videos.